Hi everyone, Sarah here from Red Rocking Bird. Today I'd like to show you this elephant sewing pattern. For this you will need the free template, some fabric, paper scissors, fabric scissors, cotton threads, small scrap of felt, pins, needles, sew machine and the toy filling. If you're a beginner I'd start with a fleece fabric. You can get them in lots of different colours and when you cut them they cut really lovely and they don't fray and you get a nice clean line as you cut them so they're really easy and versatile to use. Or you can go for a nice pretty um, cotton fabric like this or you can match them up. I might actually use one of these for the ears. Cut your paper templates out on the cut line as you can see. Place it on um, your folded fabric, so it's important here that we fold the fabric over and we're going to do a double layer so you get um, two elephant patterns, one in reverse. So pin it all nicely in place like this, all around the edges so that we're able to cut around the edges here. We will also do the same with the ear template. We'll place it down and we'll cut two out of this fabric and two out of a contrasting fabric, so you have one in reverse for each fabric. We can now remove the pins from the body template. And then we're going to cut the slit in um, for the ears next. So we remove all the pins and then I'm going to take a pin and mark it in point D. So if you can see here, I take it and I point it in to mark um, point D push it right through and through the paper because that's fine if we use it again we can use it again in the same way pop it through and that just uh, marks the position point D and I'll do the same there for the top just make a little um, little point there for where we're going to cut it there you see and then we take our um, fabric scissors Make a little insert and then cut all the way to point D there. Ensuring that you hold both um, thicknesses of the fabric together so we get a nice even cut on both sides of the elephant. There we have it, you see. So we're going to insert the ear into these, um, to these later. Here I have the ears. Um, make sure you have your fabric pieces so that they join up correctly and then we're just going to simply pin them together around the big C shape leaving open the gap so that we can sew round this. So we always sew right sides together because later on we'll be turning them the right way out and there we have it your ears we do the same for that one see right sides together going to sew right through from C round to D. So I'll take to my sewing machine and do that in a moment and then we also need to take a layer of contrasting fabric here again I have some nice fleece and put the underbody section pin and cut as we did before and remove the pins. There we have it that's all the pieces we now need and we'll save that for later to sew onto here. But first of all, we're going to put the ears in place. This fleece is just so easy to use because it doesn't um, fray, does it? Brilliant for beginners. So here we have the ears, and now we need to um, trim off the seam allowance. You can either trim with your scissors like this all around the edge, works wonderful for fleece fabric, or most of the time when I use a cotton fabric, I actually clip in here. So you clip right to the, well, a couple of millimetres right to the edge of the um, sew line. Just make sure you don't nick that sew line, otherwise it will come undone. We're now ready to turn the ear from right side out. So we just gently tease it through the gap there, push very gently, put it all in, and then we'll smooth around the seams. And there we have it. There's the ear starting to transform. So we've got a pretty pattern on one side, 
and the fleece fabric on the other and just neaten it up with trimming off any bits that we needed. There we have it, one ear. This is actually for the other side. I mean, if you wanted it like this, you could have it like this, but I, for this one, I want to have the, um, the pattern on the inside. So I'll take the other piece, and now this is the right side up. I'm going to insert the ear. So look, the point bit is down. This is both points D together. Line up point D, line up the line. Let's fold it over and look, can you see nice and neatly in there? Tuck it in right the way into D and then line up your lines and make sure you line um, the bottom edge up and then we can pin it closed. As many pins as you feel you need to keep it um, closed and then we're going to take the sew machine again or you can obviously sew by hand and sew all the way from the edge here, the edge here, all the way along using a 5 mil seam allowance. And do that and then we'll do the same with the other side. So here we have them, the two body pieces with the ears firmly fixed in place. You've got a lovely sew line along there, you've got your contrasting fabric on the inside. So as you can see here, nice neat stitches all along the edge, no holes. And then I like to take the two loose ends here and just tie a really good knot to make sure that none of that's coming loose. So we fix there. And so as you can see, both sides are opposites for our um, pieces here. We've got a left side and a right side. There they are, ready to go together and we've got here obviously our right size up. You can tack the little ears um, backwards if you like, just put a couple of stitches here if you'd like them to make sure they're pinned back or I quite often I just like to leave mine loose and free. Next we'll take our underbelly section. You can refer back to your template and just note which side, which end is A and which end is B. And then A is near the trunk, so we need to make sure we have our body, body piece right side up, and then we're going to place the underbelly piece right side down on top of this, um, with A near the trunk and B near the tail. Align it nice and neatly, lining up all the edges as you go first of all with the underbelly bit and the feet and we'll pin that in place and then we will tuck round and we'll curve those little bumps up they just give a little extra shape so we can pin it in and um, as you notice when I pinned earlier we always pin now into the fabric from a um, 45 degree angle so that we can um, sew around and as we go we release those pins. So see here we bend the fabric around, bend it together, it's lovely and easy with this um, nice fleece, so easy, that's why I recommend that to use this as a beginner because um, it's so easy and gentle to use and it's very forgiving. So bend it round, use as many pins here as you like Okay, there we go, right to the edge. There we have it, nice and neat, ready for us to sew all along here with a nice neat seam allowance, about a 5mm seam allowance. So here we'll bend around again. With the seam allowance, as long as you do the same um, measurement, same seam allowance, say 5mm, one centimetre or whatever for the whole project, everything will work out just great. Well, so here we go, pin again, just like this, ready to sew. As I say, sew by hand or by sewing machine, whichever's your preference.
I have it, yep. See, right sides together, and then the next time we're going to add that on top of there. So here we have it. I've sewn all around there all nice and neat and we can now remove the pins ready to sew um, ready to pin on the next side and you can really see the little elephant starting to come together lay this body piece right side up again and then we take the other side and we lay the other body piece right side down. First of all, pull pull the um, the underbelly piece down, as you saw then. And nice and neat at this stage. Take as long as you like. Really line it up, and then we're going to start pinning just that top layer of um, body fabric, just to that top bit of the underbelly making sure you don't catch in any of the, the bits from underneath so pin it again all nice and neatly all around the edges there again bend the little extra bits around put in a few more pins in here so we get a nice neat edge and pin right up to where your sew line was there and then when we sew we're going to sew right from that sew line and then around making sure we don't catch anything else in as we sew we just want to sew those two layers of fabric together point A again, just bend the fabric round nice and neatly, align them together, both edges and pin, ready to sew. Flatten the ears back out, just making sure we don't get any of those into our sew line. And there we have it, ready to sew. So I'm going to take it to the sewing machine again, you can sew right round as we did before right from stitching to stitching there we have it nice and neatly stitched ready for our next stage I'm going to lie everything down nice and neatly again so fold everything into how we had it before, put the ears in place now lie it nice and flat and we're going to line everything really neatly up now just so that we can sew the final bit it's cute isn't it, it's starting to come together so first I align our two seams here nice and neatly so they all match add a couple of pins in at the top here and then we're just going to simply align everything up, all the trunk the back and we'll just pin it all in place. Lovely. Now we're not going to sew this time all the way up to um, here, we're going to sew to about here because we need room to turn don't we, so pop the pin in as it was, we just made sure then that the ears weren't tucked into the, where the stitch line would be, nice align the trunk.
Okay, so here's where the opening will be, it's the gap for where we'll turn. So we're going to sew right from there, right round, right round, all the way to point A, right into where your stitching is there, is that right the way round. And there we have it, super cute, stitched all neatly there, and there's gap for turning. Make sure you leave it nice and big so we got can fit all this fabric through. And then just remove your pins. And as before, we just need to trim the seam allowance so this gives us really nice, neat curves as we go. So we've got no bulky seams sticking into the elephant here so we just trim it off as this is all um, fleece fabric I just give it an all nice little trim around there you can add a few little nicks into the corners if you like but I just give it a nice trim around so there's no excess uh, we just trim it as we go there we go Oh, now we have it, the exciting part, we get to turn it right side out, so very gently, ever so gently, just push it through, see, pop, easily comes out, and then just gently, gently tease it with your fingers, just pull up and push all around the seams, and see, just make sure everything's out there, there we go. With his little feet. Push your finger gently through the gap and round into the seams. Oh. There's his legs, so then now into the trunk. Gently tease it out very gently. You can use something like a chopstick for this so insert it into the gap and just um, gently tease out the very ends. There we go. Just get the rest of that trunk so that the seam is all nice and neat and pushed out. There we go. Lovely. So now onto the stuffing. You can buy the filling from um, lots of different craft suppliers. But, you know, if you haven't got any and you just fancied making this project, I quite often um, use an old cushion pad. If you um, just slit the old cushion pad open, make sure it's clean, obviously, first. And then often they can get a bit bunched together. So we just give them a little little pull apart and release all the fibers make it lovely and fluffy and then we'll take it insert it into the um, the gap that we had and first of all nice and firm fill the trunk up got a little helper here he likes this bit you make beautiful things mummy oh that's lovely thanks quite surprising how much uh, filling you actually need. You need to pack it quite full and firm, not too firm so that the um, the seams are, are busting open but enough so that you haven't got a floppy floppy elephant. You want to give him a nice rounded shape, nice and cute. So yeah just keep going, you basically keep going, you fill um, the trunk 
and the head bit first and then I put a little into um, the front legs and then just keep filling, keep adding. You can always add that little bit extra. Always can. There we are, cute. See? That's it, we're nearly there now. Just a small extra little bit. Just to make sure it's nice and firm in the end there. Just keep tucking it down, ease it down. Got a bit of a thread come loose there, so I'm just going to um, attach that together first. So here I've got a nice double thread, so thread your needle and tie a knot in the double end. And we're going to nice and neatly do a ladder stitch along here. So that's an invisible stitch where we um, try and close the gap so we go in one side, in one side and then come out and then go right across to the other side and you can leave it loose at this stage because we'll pull it all together right at the end. And then if you go over and then under, see like that, and then over to the other side. If you need a little diagram, um, if you look up ladder stitch or invisible stitch and see there and then pull the two stitches tight and you see it coming together. Just actually just need to leave a little bit of a gap, I forgot to mention that, at point A. Not point A, point B because it's the tail. Point B um, where we're going to insert the tail later. So here, pull it nice and neat, and then I just go back along myself and put another um, invisible ladder stitch in along as we go, just to make sure none, none of that um, filling escapes. And you can do it back on itself again if you like. So we go right down to the tail. And like I say, if you leave a tiny gap at the bottom, we're going to insert the tail at that point and then sew it up later. So you see we've got a lovely invisible stitch there, can't see it, smooth it out nicely and then nobody will ever know it's there. I always make a little tail out of some embroidery thread so we're going to insert it into um, the open gap there that we had from before. So if you take your length of embroidery thread, wrap it round something, you can wrap it round your hand, whatever, as long as we just get some even threads there. Um, that hand width is fine and then just tie a knot in one end so that we've got a little loop one end and a big loop the other end. Not done it so neatly there but as you can see we can have a little knot on one end it together sorry it's a bit out of shot there so there we had it the little loop we just poke that into the hole insert it in there and then just do lots of neat stitches round and around until that tail is really neatly attached and very securely attached And then once you've finished, just give a nice double or triple knot here, right the way into your stitch. Nice knot. And then what I do is insert it in there by the knot, through the little, into the knot there, see? 
and then through, out, give it a little tug, snip it off and release and then the end of your thread is then nice and hidden within the elephant. Cute, cute little tail, well done. Nearly there. So on to making a couple of little eyes. What you need is a little scrap of felt. I just fold one in half, fold it over and then just try and as neatly as you can cut a little, cut um, a circle so that we've got two the same size. It can be a little tricky. It is a little tricky to cut two the same. So you can actually get um, felt eyes or you can get felt dots that you could actually get a pre-made one to stick on or alternatively just um, do a little French knot for the eye um, do some little stitches for the eye but I have managed to cut a couple the same here so add it on you'll see as you move the eye up and down it looks really quite different Place it where you think you like it. I think I'll have mine about there. Pop a pin in. And then to do the other side, just place it where you think it goes and then um, have a good look as to which as to where you think it think it goes and line it neatly up. Sorry, a bit out of shot there, I need to get quite precisely. So move it around if you have the pin in just gives you um, a chance to have a good look. Check, check from the front and then check from the top and just see, make sure you've aligned them correctly. I'm just going to move it ever so slightly backwards a little, get it right. You may as well spend a bit of time getting it right at this stage. And then we're going to get our single thread, tie a knot in one end and we're just going to very gently catch stitch it all the way around. There we have it, so we just need to secure this nicely in place with a couple of knots right in underneath there slightly, right into the edge if you can and then as before we'll insert the thread under the eye, come out about an inch away and then pull tightly and then snip the thread off. So there we have it, the edge of your thread gets stuck within there. Super! If you do the same for the other eye, it'd be wonderful. And then what I like to do is just add a tiny little bit of white white acrylic paint or a little fleck of white for the extra little detail on the eye. Super cute! Well done! Thank you for watching Red Rocking Bird.